The surface portions at the beginning and the end of each dive are some of the most dangerous times that people spend in the water. And yet people often feel safer at the surface than they do at depth, which is only natural, I suppose. But let's talk about good surface habits. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, it is so great to see your smiling faces out there in YouTube land. I hope you're all doing really, really well. If you're new to our channel, welcome. It is a pleasure to have you with us. And just to show you around a little bit about what we do, we make videos with one very simple goal in mind, and that's to help make you a better, more well-informed scuba diver. So if you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button, hit that little bell icon, and I promise you, value for money with every video. Now, if I can get real for a second here, the surface terrifies me. It absolutely terrifies me. I hate being on the surface before and after a dive. The surface is where a considerable amount of dive accidents happen. Nobody gets decompression sickness, the bends, at their maximum depth. It happens on ascent or at the surface. Nobody ever gets hit by a boat at 30 meters or 100 feet down. It happens on the surface. Lots of drowning incidents happen at the surface. Part of these accidents is the false sense of security people feel when they're in ambient air. They're on the surface, everything's fine, I might as well just be swimming. But that's not always the case. The dive is either done or hasn't started yet, so the individual feels safe as they did on the boat or on the shore. Nothing could be further from the truth. So, with that in mind, let's look at the dangers that lurk, not below the water, but on the surface. Some common incidents and accidents. Hints and allegations. Roll the Paul Simon song. And what we can do to be better, safer divers while topside. Also, later in this video, I'm going to be giving you my six best pieces of advice for good surface habits while on a live boat operation, i.e. a drift dive. So stay tuned for that coming up at the end. Okay, let's start with the basics then. Buddy checks. I hope everyone watching this video as a certified diver knows that they have to do buddy checks before every dive. Every dive should start with a buddy check, of course. Every training agency has one, and no matter which one you learned with, you know that it's an essential part of your pre-dive process. And yet, and yet, not a day goes by when I'm out on a South Florida dive boat and somebody gets in the water who is not ready to dive. The surface conditions and sometimes just dumb luck decides whether that individual recovers from their error or gets punished for it. Examples, getting in the water with your gas turned off, missing your mask, missing your fins, no weights, no computer, gear not secured properly. And people always rag on the dive master or the boat captain or whoever for checking the valve, but they do so, and yet they find one in 10 that's turned off. So of course they're gonna check your tank even though you're like, hey, don't touch my gear. Look at it from their side. They kind of have to check your gear because you might be that one in 10. No, not me but they don't know that. I'm telling you, I see these errors every single day. If you start a dive with any of these problems, you're adding unnecessary stress or creating small problems that can quickly snowball into an absolute disaster. Let me give you an actual case study from just last Friday. I'm on a dive boat, I'm heading out to the Spiegel Grove, I've got a student with me, and we're gonna do one long technical dive. I don't hurry to get in the water, I'm sitting there, waiting for all the recreational divers who are going to do a double dip to get off first. Across from me, there is a couple who are doing a double dip. The man did not pay attention to the dive briefing given by the boat crew. He basically talked his entire way through it and was fiddling with his gear. His partner stopped what she was doing and listened to the boat crew. Not in a hurry to get in myself. We were on site for 140 minutes and I had like an 80 minute dive planned. I watched these people kit up. The woman diligently got into her gear and then went through her pre-dive checks on her own, went through everything, made sure everything working. The man donned his gear, but then immediately stood up to retrieve his camera from the camera bucket. They both made a giant stride entry into the water. The man did not have the guideline in his hand as the boat crew had briefed and forgotten to don his fins. He got in the water without his fins on. On this particular day, there was a reasonable surface current. Not ridiculous, but it was definitely flowing. 
So now he's in the water with no line in his hand because he didn't listen to the briefing about how to get into the water off of this particular boat and no fins on. And as hard as he tried, he was unable to make headway into the current and as such started drifting off behind the boat. And of course, the attentive first mate got the rescue float line out and swam it to him and disaster was averted. But by the time he got him back on board, he, the buddy was recalled, everyone was back on board, he was red faced and panting from all the exertion and stress and the dive was cancelled, it was ruined as it should have been. This is just one recent example. I could give you literally hundreds more. So, buddy check guys. Buddy check, buddy check every dive. Right, reg in, mask on. For me, the dive starts with a buddy check and ends with every team member back safely on board, gears stowed and all divers made to feel comfortable. Everything in between those two things is the dive. So once you're into your buddy checks, Game faces, people. Turn your mind on. The dive has begun, whether you're in the water or not. That's the mindset I want every single one of you to develop. That means mask on your face, regulator in your mouth, start to finish. That way, whatever else is happening, you can see and you can breathe. I also see people on the surface all the time at the start of their dive, discussing their dive plan, already in the water, regs out of their mouth, fighting the swell current. Okay, so where are we gonna go on this dive? trying to have a natural about the dive that they've already started. So in addition to the buddy checks of the equipment, make sure you and your buddy have an agreed upon plan before entering the water. If you're doing that on the surface in open water scenarios, uh, that's not a good time. I also see divers who come up from a dive in swell and immediately spit their rag out on the surface and start gabbing about how awesome their dive was and what they saw, it was awesome. Don't do that. The same thing applies to shore diving, in fact, especially for shore diving, where a surf entry can either pitch you onto your face or sweep you off your feet unexpectedly. Reg in, mask on. That way you can see and you can breathe and you're safe from entry till exit when you're safely back on the boat or dry land. We talk a lot on this channel about buoyancy. Let's talk about positive buoyancy. I can't stress this enough. When a dive goes bad, quite often the difference between survival and disaster is whether or not the victim of the accident is capable of achieving positive buoyancy on the surface. If you have a medical emergency whilst diving, whether it's diving related or not, could be a heart attack or a stroke, hypothermia, hypercapnia, one of the biggest lifesavers is the ability to get back to the surface safely and then to remain positively buoyant so that you can be assisted. I have recovered three divers' bodies in my career, all of them from the bottom, all of them with empty BCDs and their weight systems still in place. You know that pesky weight remove and replace surface skill you were made to do as part of your open water training? Yeah, that's why. Those are the only two ways, by the way, of achieving positive buoyancy, either inflating your BCD or dropping your weights. Of course, on a normal dive when everything goes to plan, dropping your weights is a very expensive way to achieve positive buoyancy. So we prefer to inflate our BCD. But I cannot stress this enough. When you get to the surface, inflate your BCDs. I see people all the time who are trying to swim from the mooring to the back of the boat and their BCDs aren't inflated and they're struggling to stay positively buoyant on the surface. If anything happens to you, if you get bent, if you pass out, if you get sick, you are floating and your surface support can fish you out and attend to you rather than have you slip back under the surface. Really serious stuff, guys, I know. Next up, let's talk about boat ladder safety. For boat diving, people consistently underestimate the potential danger a simple ladder presents. In most instances, you're looking at a free-swinging aluminium ladder attached to a heavy boat being pitched around in swell. As my good buddy Rich was very fond of saying in his boat briefings, it doesn't matter how big or strong you think you are, if you try to fight the ladder, you will lose. So absolutely do listen to the best practice advice given by the crew during the boat briefing. If the ladder is a fins on ladder, leave your fins on, leave your reg in, leave your mask on. If the ladder is a fins off ladder, make sure you remove your fins on the tag line so you're not trying to take them off while riding the ladder like a bucking bronco. That's not a good place to do it. Use the tag line, pull yourself to the ladder, slip your fins uh, straps over your wrists, hand them up to the boat crew, whatever's easiest. Fin tips first is always preferable. And then climb the ladder as swiftly as possible. Also, 
hang back. If you're not the person on the ladder, you don't want to be the person under the person on the ladder because if they slip and fall backwards, they'll be fine. They'll be back in the water with their egg in the mouth and the mask on, but you'll take their cylinder front and center, which is not a good look for you, I promise you. All right, let's talk about live boating operations. One of my biggest fears when diving in the open ocean is being struck by a boat. The general standard of seamanship that I observe on a weekly basis off of the coast of Florida, and particularly around holiday weekends, quite frankly scares the shit out of me. People do not know what they're doing, and they're driving boats that they have absolutely no business driving. I have had so many friends have a near miss while drifting on the surface after a dive, waiting to be picked up for a live boat drift dive operation, despite having their flags or DSMBs visible, just from useless recreational boaters not knowing what they're doing. It is truly terrifying. There are also stories of divers being run over by their own dive boat, whose captain later tested positive for Peruvian marching powder. That's an actual thing that happened. As promised, here are my six tips for being a better diver on the surface after a drift dive. Number one, stay together. Be arm's length from each other. You're more visible as a group rather than spread out as individuals. So stick together. Number two is be visible. Two SMBs are better than one SMB or dive flag. Inflate a second bag. Don't be stitchy, stingy with those DSMBs. You know how I feel about them. Blow the bag, inflate your sausage, show people where you are. Literally, it will double your visibility. So get your second bag out, fill it up, wave it around, and make sure people can see you. Number three is be audible. Whistles, sirens, air horns, whatever you're carrying, don't be afraid to use them. Hopefully, hopefully, a wayward boater might hear you over the five, 450 horsepower engines he's strapped to his 23 foot Mako with the music blaring and the bikini girls screaming. Does that only happen in Florida? Uh, I don't know. Or not, but it can't hurt to try. Number four is keep your head on a swivel. Look around you. If a boat is coming at you from downwind, you might not hear it until it's too late. Number five, only use reputable dive companies that will actually come and pick you up promptly. Again, I have many, many friends who have stories about being left adrift in the open ocean for, in one case, well over an hour before their dive boat decided to come and pick them up unacceptable. A good dive boat captain will put their dive boat between you and any other boat traffic and protect you. This is so, so important. Make sure that your boat crew know how to operate an actual drift dive scenario. They should be doing it week in and week out. Number six is be ready for pickup. Be ready when the boat comes in to get you. The boat crew should throw you some kind of tagline. Be ready to grab onto it and start taking your fins off. Remember, the boat will always drift faster than you will. So you'll need to be fast about exiting the water or you're going to be get dragged for a ride. A good captain will place the wind before the boat, before the driver, so the boat can go into neutral or engines off and the wind will push the boat towards you. But if you dilly-dally, by the way, one of my favorite words, I'm bringing it back and I'm definitely going to remember to use that more often. If you dilly-dally, you're going to get taken for a ride because as I said, that boat is gonna drift faster than you will. So there you go, that's my top six tips for good surface habits. If I could surmise all the advice in this video, it would be thus. Spend as little time as possible on the surface. Plan your dive, do your checks on the boat or ashore so that when you get into the water quickly and efficiently, you can get straight away underneath. After the dive, practice good surface habits, keep your mask on, keep your reg in, make sure you're positively buoyant, exit the water as efficiently as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much as always for watching. Uh, if you did learn something from this video, if you enjoyed it, give us the old thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below, did you hear or see in your own personal experience any particular scuba diving instance that happened on the surface? If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It really, really appreciate it. It means the world to me. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your video for this week from Divers Ready. Dive safe, dive often. Yeah.